All right, today we're going to take a look at the electrical and the hydraulic part of the 9 KCL from Titan Lifts. That's the 9 two post KCL and also the 13 is going to be the same way, just a larger tank. When you get it, you're going to notice there's three wires hanging out the side. The yellow and green is your ground wire. The other two will be your power wires. Regardless of what color they are, those will both be power wires. This will always be either green or like a green yellow or maybe a bear, and that will be your ground wire. Now, after you take all the screws out holding the cover on, you're going to see the contactor, the push button for that, and your start and your run capacitors. If those need replaced, there's a simple screw on a wire disconnect that you can do that. If you're hooking up a limit switch on this, uh, a safety switch at the top, you're simply going to cut uh, one of these wires from the push button, cut one of those in half, wire half of it to go to the limit switch, and the other wire coming down will go to the other half. So you're simply going to cut this, connect those two ends to the two ends going up to the limit switch, and that will provide you with a shutoff should something happen and hit your safety bar at the top. Then inside the unit, you're going to notice that there's a contactor. Um, it's mounted upside down compared to most of them, and you're going to kind of slide this out, wiggle and slide, okay. And you will see on one side, there's two yellow wires, or they can be any color. And those are the wires that go to, that come from the motor to the contactor. And that'll be hooked up to a couple terminals in there. And then that goes directly to the motor. Then on the opposite side of that, just across from those two wires, will be the two wires for your power coming in. And on this particular motor, they are uh, blue and brown, and those go to the exact opposite side of the contactor where your power wires for the motor come in. So depending upon uh, what set of contacts you're using as to which one of those um, that's going to go to. But they will be directly across... And then when the contactor senses power, when you push in the button, it will uh, energize the coil on the contactor, and it will pull that in. So this little blue thing is going to suck in, and then that will give you electricity across those two contacts. So in this case, it's going to be two wires here, two wires there, and those two contacts. When that pulls in, you'll have 220 volt coming in and 220 volt going to the motor. And that is basically how that's going to be wired up. Um, they may be different color wires, but that's how that's going to be wired. And your capacitors are the same way. One will be a start, one will be a run. If you ever need to replace those, you'll clip the wire, wire nut it, and put it back together. Um, once you see how that goes, then the wires going to the... Uh, contactor are here and like I say you're, you're going to basically end up cutting one of these and that'll be your safety bar um, to make sure that that's going to work okay so the wire comes from the switch goes up to here that gives you 220 volt then it goes through the switch comes in here and powers the um, control to suck that in Okay, so you're basically just going to cut one of those wires, hook it up to your trip bar, and connect it back up. And then usually you can do that without even uh, removing the contactor. Then you're going to slide the contactor back in there. Make sure it's on the little bracket. Put that back in. Slide it in. Put your cap back on. And your wiring is done. Normally we will wire nut right to here to give us our power. 
some guys will disconnect this and uh, put a flex joint right in here and wire that up inside the box. But as you can see, that box is kind of tight inside there. So we would just wire nut this and make sure that that is secure. And then your hydraulic fittings here, the hose going to your cylinders will connect to here. And you're going to want to make sure this is tight. And this is your lowering and release valve. Okay. You're going to hit the button here to power it up for the unit to go up. And then when you want to come down, you push this in. And that will release the hydraulic pressure and let it flow. Then you have a throttle adjustment right here, which will adjust how fast the lift will go down. Usually you're never going to mess with that. But that's what that is for, to adjust your speed coming down. And then your tank, you're going to hold about two, two and a half gallons of hydraulic fluid. Um, you want to, it's hard to kind of see this one, so you're going to take the cap off, put fluid about an inch or so below that fill cap, and you're good. Um, there are some other plugs on here, uh, but you really don't want to mess with those. Those are for um, adjusting that you should never, never, never have to mess with. So that's our 9KCL motor, which is slightly different than the 9AC. Uh, this motor has a two-year warranty, and the other one has a one-year warranty. Give us a call if you have one of these lifts, and if you need parts or service. Uh, parts we can get. Service, uh, I can tell you what you need to do to fix it, and go from there. All right. Give us a call. We're here weekdays 10 to 6, Saturday 10 to 1.